everyone and welcome to a Q&A on studying classics at Trinity College, Cambridge with Dr. Neil Hopkinson. Welcome. I wonder if we could just start with, uh, with a little bit of background about what classics means to you and, and, and what the subject entails uh, from your viewpoint. Um, well, the subject entails study of the Latin and Greek languages and the culture of ancient Greece and Rome more generally. Um, study of the languages is introduced at a, right at the beginning mm. for those who haven't done it at school. And we have either a four year or a three year course, depending on whether applicants already have Latin or not. Right. And during the course of the uh, first year, they decide what to specialize in a bit more closely. Mm. So the course can be as broad or as specialized as you like, and the further you pr proceed in it, um, the more you're able to specialise, so that by the end, you've covered a broad range of topics, and also have the pleasure of specialising in a, a less broad, but more concentrated uh, body of material. Mm. The languages are carried on for the first two years of the course, and then maybe continued for the third year if you wish. Perfect. Thank you very much. And um, in that in that first year, you sort of alluded to um, in the first year that you it opens up to a to a broader range as the year as the year goes on. I wonder if you could just sort of for those for those students who are sitting at home thinking, oh, I'd love to go and study uh, classics at like Trinity. What might what might they expect to happen in that first year? Um, well, if they were doing the three year course, they would have a sort of foundation year in which they're knowledge of Latin was reinforced and they were introduced to Greek if they didn't have it already. And they would also study the history, philosophy, linguistics and art and archaeology of the ancient world quite broadly. And then in the second year, they would con concentrate on fewer of those options in addition to literature. And then in the third year, they would specialise a bit more still. Excellent. And, and how does that differ for if they do the four-year course, whereby they haven't studied Latin um, before they come? Well, for the four-year course, the first year is spent almost entirely on learning the Latin language, um, with a few essays thrown in, but mostly it's language, intensive language study to get up to the right. level of A-level or even beyond. Right. Um, and then students who've done that first year move into the first year of the three-year course and begin Greek. Right, right. So in order to apply to do classics, you've got to have a keen interest in learning the languages, as well as a curiosity about the ancient world in general. It's a very broad and challenging course, but also very rewarding. Mm. It has a broader scope than many degree subjects. Right. So uh, challenging in that respect, particularly. Yeah. And do you, do you teach a year one module yourself? And if so, what, what does it contain? I, well, as I said, year, year one for beginners in Latin is mostly language learning. And that's taught chiefly in the faculty building, centralised teaching. But I do do backup supervisions for that one-to-one -one tuition right. in the Latin language. I also teach the Greek language in the second and third years. So... Um, students who study at Trinity see me at least once a week, often twice a week, even if they want extra help. Right. Um, and in addition to that, I teach several modules of the uh, literature options too. Right. And so, if if they're thinking, if they're, they're sitting at home thinking about studying classics, um, what sort of um, do you have specific A levels that you require to study the course, or? Um, Indeed, if not, what sort of what sort of thing can they do at home to best prepare themselves for an application? Well, if you're applying for the three-year course, the only one that's required is Latin A level. Um, only about, I would say, thirty to forty percent of applicants have the opportunity to have done Greek at school, so that's by no means required. Applicants for the four-year course are a broader spectrum. And there's nothing particularly required, but obviously it's quite useful to have done a language yeah. at school. 
maybe an inflected language, one where the endings of the words are significant, because those are the sorts of languages that Latin and Greek are. Um, and if you have done a language of that sort, then the basic grammatical concepts are familiar to you. But we do admit an extremely broad range of people. I've admitted students who have done maths, physics, and chemistry at A level to study right. classics. Um, more commonly, applicants have a broadly arts background. Often they've done A level ancient civilization, classical civilization, or ancient history, mm. um, or French, German, history, English. Those are very common. And actually, with um, applicants for three year course, maths and further maths are quite common, second and right. third A levels. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's uh, surprising, I think, for, for, for many people. Um, but good to know for those students sitting there um, who, who are thinking, well, I, I might, maybe that was ruled out to me, but clearly it's not. And um, in, terms of, so in terms of outside of school um, and beyond the sort of academic um, in school provision that they could get on, on, on that you've just alluded to, what else could they do outside of school to help best prepare themselves for, for perhaps for the application and, and for interviews? Um, well, if there is a local museum, it's useful to go and have a look at the antiquities section there. Um, I think wide reading is probably the best preparation for almost any arts course at any university. Um, the wider you can read in your own literature or in the case of classics in classical writers in translation if you don't have the languages the better because that would give you a, a broad background and when you come to have an interview at Cambridge or for example you will have something to talk about that's relevant to the subject yeah um, interviews where physics has to be discussed for example are <laughs> For a person such as myself, rather tricky. So, if you can bridge the gap with the interviewer in some way by preparing a topic that is relevant and shows your own enthusiasm, mm. then all the better. Excellent. Yeah, that's excellent advice. And um, what would you say the best thing about studying classics is in Cambridge? Well, probably the broadness of the subject itself. You. It's a degree that's well regarded by employers because it combines knowledge of two quite challenging languages with knowledge mm. of two cultures in addition and things like philosophy and history. Um, so that by the end of the course, you've got an idea of how these great civilizations differed from our own. And by the course drawing attention to those differences, it's possible to appreciate your own culture in a different light and not mm. to take for granted many things which otherwise you may do. Mm. Especially, I think, given the current climate, I, I, can't, I can imagine that's more true than ever before. Yes, well, the newspapers have been citing Thucydides, the oh, really? historian writing about the plague, for example, and its effects on the citizens of Athens. And the Roman poet Lucretius, who wrote a philosophical poem, ended that very gloomily with a description of the Athenian plague and how people fought over the pyres to burn the dead. Not the way you'd expect a poem to end, which was about no. countering the fear of death, but that's how he chose to end it. Right. Well, let's hope it doesn't, uh, let's hope we're not, we don't have to resort to, uh, to that. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you alluded to um, to employers greatly valuing, you know, the, the degree um, for, for for going into the world of employment. Um, could you could you perhaps sort of give some examples of where some of your students have gone on to um, gone into into the world of work following their their degree their degree at Cambridge? Yes, if you're a student of classics in France or Germany, then the career path is almost always to become a school teacher of that subject, but. That's never been the case in Britain. And our students follow quite a number of different paths. Many of mine have become lawyers over the years. Mm, right. Classic seems to be well regarded in the legal profession. Whether that's a good thing or a bad, I'll leave you to decide. Um, <laughs> quite a number do also go into teaching. 
also yes. and into journalism. Um, there's a considerable range. It, it's difficult to generalize too much, but I would have said that of my own students, probably law is the commonest degree course, in a uh, communist career. In other words, um, although classics isn't directly relevant to the law, um, it prepares you, it seems, pretty well for the type of thinking that's necessary for the legal mind. Mm. Well, that's, that, that's really um, that's interesting to hear that. And I, that would be, it's, it's good to know that um, there's, there's different options out there for, um, for students who, who may or may not continue, I suppose, within, within academia, or, and there's options out there beyond, beyond academia as well. Yes, of course, quite a few students do go on to graduate work. Maybe 25% go on to take a, right. a one-year uh, MPhil at the end of the degree, and then a smaller proportion of those go on to do PhDs. And most of those people, of course, will end up with academic jobs. Right. And just, and, and just finally, I think... Um, if there's if there's one top tip you could give students who are thinking about applying to to study classics at, at Trinity, what would that one tip be? Uh, do you mean before applying? Yeah, before applying, exactly. So for for potentially a year twelve student at home, what would what would be the best tip you could give them to sort of to spur them on to go and apply? Um, I would advise them in the little free time they have from studying for A levels to dip randomly into books about the subject, either in the school library or the public library or online, and to try and get a, a view of how things developed in the ancient world, both literary and historically. Mm. Um, whatever aspect of the subject ties in with their A-level studies, be it literary or philosophical or historical, they could read one or two classical texts, historians, philosophers, in translation, and get some idea of the background. And that would stand them in good stead both for their interviews and for their studies at school. And it would mean that they hit the ground running when they started a university course, wherever it was in classics. Excellent. Dr. Neil Hawkinson, thank you very much. You're very welcome.